thanking you for your numerous blessings in our lives. It will be all honor, glory, adoration, and thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we come asking for mercy. Asking for mercy, my Father and my God. And I will be sin against you. In thought, word, and but God, if we say we have not sinned, then we deceive ourselves. And there is no truth in us. But with you is mercy. With you is forgiveness. With you is plenteous redemption. Deliver us, O God, from all our iniquities. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Therefore, Father, your children will cry to you this day. Perish all the sins of our lives. In whatever shape or form. Turn to what I need. Perish all of them in your self forgetfulness. Don't do let them ever come before your holy face again in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Do not allow them to haunt us ever again in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, just with please, the blood of Savior Jesus Christ, let it come down and flush every spot and wrinkle of sin out of our being. That as we behold us in service this month, we will not see any sin in us. Not even the spot to say not that to wrinkle. In any one of us, your children are not here. Rather, see us over, clothing our white in the garment of the same bride of Christ. We thank you, we know you have answered our prayers. Let's be the holy name, Lord. For in Jesus Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. And Father God Almighty, because it's up to your spirit to gather this morning, we ask that the same spirit to teach us your word today. For you know that that people you are dealing with now is the most essential part of what we call your life. And which is the only thing that is going to lead your children in the right way, in the right way. A difficult subject, but your spirit that gave it also let us understand it. We cry to you, let your spirit be released upon your children. That as your will comes to me, all of us will have a complete understanding of it all. And we shall go rejoicing and have the divine enablement to share this with others. That no one shall be in a position to plead ignorance ever at that time. That time of the rapture, which is just on the corner now, corner now. May all the children, all of us, make it. In Jesus Christ's holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I welcome you, brethren, to this day's service. And I want to say that I'm really pleased that we were able to make it considering. The rain. The rain has been really, really, really tough this month. No, that's the reason we couldn't stay. We had to come inside because there's no way we could have had this meeting outside. And yet you are there. Yeah, I thank God for that. God will be working for this in Jesus' name. And so, my brethren, we want to continue with this topic that we've been dealing with for quite some time now. I think today is the eighth, the eighth Sunday that we are talking about this subject, revisiting the rapture deeply. I will still continue. Shall we end today? I don't have any idea. Only the Spirit of God that is giving us these instructions, teaching us, teaching us with the time. What I plan to do today, I want to change my mind. Today, I have wanted to go teaching 
on the uh, on the book of redemption because that's actually the whole matter of rapture and that is the issue in revelation 10 1 to 6 the mighty angel descending with that book the mighty angel of course being the lord jesus christ himself and uh, that's also the period of the rapture so since we are rapture, that is actually the scripture yes first corinthians first corinthians 15 gives us some idea first Thessalonians 4 the same thing but this is revelation 10 7 in Revelation 10, 1 to 6, that we actually see what this thing is all about. And that was what I planned to do. And I also remember that we had dealt with the three stages, we were dealing with, also we're dealing with three stages of the rapture, the shout, the voice of the archangel. But we have, we have left the third one on top, which is the trump. Of God. So I decided that this morning we shall go, we shall teach about the trump of God. And uh, if there's time, then we'll begin to say something about this Revelation 10, 1 to 6, which deals with the book of redemption. What really is this book? So that we can have a good understanding of it because. The most important matter in the rapture at the time is going to happen is what you have in the Bible called the seven thunders. And the seven thunders, they occur in Revelation 10. And we need to study this very, very well. We need to have a good, once you have a good understanding of it, all that will be required of you is how to just manage your life to reflect the life of Christ and then you are going in. When we get to doing that, there are certain things I'm going to bring up about the elect so that we have an idea of what elect really is all about. But this morning, let's see how far we can go with the trump of God. So I'm going to talk about this other one. Let us read. First, uh, first Thessalonians 4, verse 16. And then we'll go to first Corinthians. First Corinthians 15. Read at verse 52 only. So are we there? Want to read first Corinthians and first Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. Ready, George? We <coughs> thank you, God, for your words. We thank you for the hands that are holding this world. May you bless them, O God, sanctify them, and grant that all that the children will be. They will receive understanding of it today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. First Thessalonians 4 16. Ready, read. For oh, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Remember the trump of God. The trump of God simply means the trumpet of God. Okay. First Corinthians 15. Let us read verse 52. Ready? Read. In a moment, the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, 
for the joint pressure assault and the pressure and praise to corrupt people and we shall be together. We thank you, God, for this one. Lord, we are grateful that thou, O oh God, you give us understanding of all of this. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So, the trump of God or the trumpet of God. Let us make it very clear. It is not a literal, uh, it's not a literal trumpet. You understand what I mean? It is not a literal trumpet. That is not the kind of trumpet you put in your mouth and begin to blow. No, no, no. The trump of God here is actually the voice of God. That is what it means. The voice of God sounding like a trumpet. That is what this trumpet of God is all about. And what does it do? It is the voice of God sounding like a trumpet in the realm of the spirit. In the realm of the spirit. And it goes up so as to gather Reason says, you know, when we were dealing with the second stage of the rapture, we're talking about the voice of the archangel. I hope you remember that we showed you that voice of the archangel in Revelation 10, verse 2. How many of you remember that? So I know we should read the name of the how many remember that that's what it is? Doesn't look. Okay, so let's go back to the list of 10 now. Somebody there, do we have the mics? Who is going to pass it on? Maybe for us, the version 10. I'll start from verse 1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, protect me, and a rapper was upon his head, and his face was as it were song and his feet as a pillar of fire. That is describing Christ straight away in the form of an angel. <laughs> okay. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. Verse 3. And cried with a loud voice, as when a lion ground. Stop. And he cried with a loud voice. That is the voice of the archangel of First Thessalonians 4:16. So that's the second stage of the rapture. Okay, now you understand. So that voice is the voice of the archangel. So you see the trump of God again. It's all about God we get here. But no, nothing of man is this. The voice of the archangel, the voice of God sound in the spirit realm. And all is sounding for is to gather the reason saints. And you know that we read before the saints, the saints were gathered. I also explain to you when we're dealing with this. In the second stage of rapture, the voice of the archangel, I explained to you that is the voice of the archangel that will raise the dead saints. In the voice of the archangel. Now, because of the way it is worded, I want you to some of the controversy that has arisen. People say it is the trumpet that rose them when they're risen. But the truth is, I gave you uh, 
I gave you uh, a Bible quotation that the voice of the Lord will raise people from the graves so this last days. So that's what it is. But you see, there are two things happening. And so when you look at how it is written in the Bible, people keep thinking it is the uh, Trump. Rather, what the Bible is saying is describing two things. The shout is gone, it is still going on. The voice of the archangel, we are expecting it. When it comes, it raises the dead. These, are, these will be finished matters. But as soon as that is done, the trumpet is sounding, and then the dead saints, once they are raised, they are changed. Their bodies are changed, and we have gone into that before when we talked about the bodies. If you don't remember, please check your check your videos because I send these things to you. So you will see there that the bodies are changed, and then we who are alive at that same time, those who are not dead at that time when the voice of the archangel shall sound, those who are not dead. Their bodies will not be changed before the bodies of those who are dead. Let me repeat that very clearly. And then I said it two Sundays ago, but in case you forgot it. The shout, three stages to rapture. The shout, it is still going on. My talking to you now is part of the shout. The voice of the archangel is the one we are expecting next. That's the second stage. The trump of God, which will lift people up to go and meet Christ in the air, that is the third stage. Now, in that second stage, when the voice of the archangel will sound, it is going to raise the dead saints. When the dead saints are raised, please listen to me carefully, church here. Eh? I want to catch something. There are two sets of saints. Those who are dead. That is from the moment Jesus Christ ascended to heaven. That very second that Jesus Christ ascended to heaven. All those who died in Christ from that moment, where are they? They are still under the ground, right? Now, don't you bother yourself. Well, say, but that's 2,000 years ago, right? If the bodies are gone now, they are not gone. God knows where they are. So you don't need that to go. Don't worry yourself. God knows where they are. Not, do, do you realize that nothing is lost in creation? I think many of us don't really know that. Nothing is lost in creation. I am speaking to you now, you are hearing my voice, true or not? Do you know that it is not lost? Even science has admitted that. That is why science is working hard now to get the voice of Christ when he was on earth. They know it is still there somewhere. It is just still going on. When you go to the stream now eh, and you drop a stone, what do you see? Eh? Ripples, I mean. You see, just when the final, you don't see it again. It is not gone, it's still continuing, it's still in the nature, it's still in nature. When you take the wood now, you set fire to it, the wood burns and turns into what? Apart from ash, what do you see first? Smoke. That smoke, you are not saying it's gone, but it's not gone. It is still trapped in creation. Nothing that God created is wasted. It is still there, but it is beyond you, it's beyond me to know you to see it. All right? So, see this clearly. People, are dead. Two sets of saints. The dead saints, they're under the ground. And they are living saints. 
I'm saying let's assume now that Rapture is going to strike this evening. Are you with me, George? Just assume that Rapture is going to strike this evening. It will affect people who have died since Jesus Christ ascended. That's about 2,000 years ago. It will affect all of us who are here now, assuming we shall not die before the evening. It will affect us. Are we living or not? We are living. Therefore, rapture is about two groups the dead saints and the living saints. I hope this is getting clearer to me now. It's about two groups the dead saints and the living saints. So, when the uh, voice of the archangel, which you just read now in Revelation 10, verse 3, when that voice sounds, the dead saints will arise. That voice will raise them. That moment that the dead saints are raised, are we who are alive, still alive or not? We're alive. So we're alive, and yet dead saints are what? Alive or dead? They're also alive. But you and I will not see them. Listen very carefully, the church. That moment when the voice of the archangel goes and the dead in Christ arise, we who are alive at that time, we do not see them immediately dead. Why? Because their, their bodies are changed. And our own bodies are still as they are. We are still in the mortal, corrupt body, but they are now in the immortal, incorrupt body. Are you with me, church? Yes, because if you don't understand, please write down your question. But that's what's going to happen. So the voice of the archangel, and they immediately arise. As they are rising, then they arise and they are changed. And immediately after, we who are alive will be changed. We will not die. Do you understand? So when everybody says, ah, every man will die, just let them come down. Not every man will die. And that also puts the lie to those who say that uh, Elijah and uh, Enoch will be the two, uh, uh, two prophets of Revelation 13 and Revelation 11 because they did not die and therefore they must come back to come and die because the Bible says it is given to man who wants to die. And after judgment, that man also says that we who are alive and remain shall be changed in two of a night, we shall not die. It's not all men who will die. At the time of the rapture, there will be living human beings who will not taste death, they will just be changed. I hope you are, you are getting this clear now. Yes, so th that is it. So the dead in Christ, the voice raises them. As it raises them, they, their bodies are changed. Then we who are alive and remain, our own bodies, we don't die, our bodies are also immediately changed. When our bodies are changed, we see them, because both of us are now the same. We are both of us, both groups that are in the glorified bodies. Do you understand, George? And immediately after that, it's going of an eye, piank, we fly off, defying the laws of gravity. That twinkle of an eye is not the same thing as the batting of an eye needle. Twinkle of an eye is so sweet we cannot measure it. Is some people try to do it. They some people who, who went into the side. They say it is a, a nanosecond, one sixth, one sixth of a nanosecond. I don't know if you know what nano means. Nano means so tiny you don't, don't even know it exists. So one sixth of that. So that means you won't even know before you get boom, it's gone. That's what is going to happen. I hope I've cleared that. Part. Okay, now.
Let's get back to where we want to start from today. The trump of the the trump of God. I told you now, trump of God. God is not blowing any trumpets. I hope you understand me. So what you see here is just the voice of God in the spirit realm, and it happens only just to gather the saints together. So anytime you see the trump sounding like that of God in the Bible, is gathering people, the Old Testament especially, is always gathering Israel to a feast or to some uh, important things happening. You understand that? Okay. Somebody read me. Now, this limit, it is not living and dead saints, right? Together. We have been changed from mortal to immortal, and uh, we are now together. We are glad now to go and meet the Lord in the air. Yes? Yes? Can you hear yourself when you say the question? Yeah, speak. Yes. What is the space of time between the voice of the angel and the of God? Wow. Almost, almost timeless. All of this is going to happen so quickly you can't, you can't count it. No, but what I've just done, what I've, what, what, what I've just done is so Okay, what I've just done is to explain it to you as if there is time. Mm -hmm. It is everything done, it goes so swift. But I just want you to understand what it's like. They are changed, they, 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 uh, they are raised and changed. They are, and sometimes also are changed. It's so quick. But I just want you to understand how it is. So, yes, several questions. When is that in Christ? When the dead Christ arrives, yes. will they be on earth in waiting for the living Christ to be saved by the Son of God? Yes, they are, they, they are, they, their bodies are on this earth. So when, they, when the voice of that angel sounds and they are raised, they are, they are here and they are standing on this earth. Because it's from this earth that they will be translated. Right or something means translation. The translation of the saints. That's what. Not of this translation of the saints from the earth to heaven. <coughs> That's actually the name of rapture. Okay. Third question. Let's go on. Also, what age is death in Christ? What? What age? Age. Will the death in Christ be when the voice of the archangel changes death from death to living? Fine. Is it the age in all time? Very good question. The person asking that question say, okay, these people are dead. So what age would they be? Remember someone, you know, Jesus Christ went up at me about 2,000 years ago. Just imagine somebody who died one second after Jesus Christ went up. Huh? That person who died one second after Jesus Christ went up. How old would it be now if you had been living? It would be about 2,000 years. Is that not right? So, answering this question now. So, if it's someone about 2,000 years old now, get up. I will be looking like a 2,000 year old person. Can you imagine what a 2,000 year old person would look like? Uh, what is this? I'm coming to you. So, so you understand now. So, that's what we took there to tell you. Then there are some people who died 1,000 years after Jesus Christ. There are some who died 100 years after Jesus Christ. And there are some who died this morning. Yet, they all be raised. Would therefore, would therefore, would there be 
difference in ages? No. So that's something you have to bear in mind. So when the dead are raised and they are changed, and the living, their bodies are changed, everybody will be exactly the same age. And this will be the age in the early 20s. We are not, I cannot say it's exactly 21 or whatever, but it's in the early 20s, not the data 20s, no, no, no. And just that stage, that you say somebody is just young. And why is that? Because you want to say, but daddy, why should it be so? And that would be a good question. You did ask it, now I'm asking it, and I want to answer it. When Adam was created, was he wearing a nappy? Huh? George? Was Adam created a child that was learning how to sit down, top place of crawling? He was created a man. You understand? That age, how Adam looked at creation, the formation of the body, that's exactly how every human being will be. Just remember one thing. When Adam was created, that moment Adam was created, every human being on the face of this earth, including those who have not yet been born, everybody who passed through this earth until the time to go back into eternity. Because when we go back, when we go into eternity, nobody is given back to anybody again. So you understand the church. Once we enter eternity, nobody, no more given of birth. No new human being is coming. It's finished. So, but well, from now until that time, any human being that graced this earth was created the very moment that Adam was created. So if you want to be, if you just want to tickle ourselves, we can say all of us are at the, at the same age because we have, we have the same birthday. You understand, church? So you see, the people will be that age and that early 20s, so that 20 to about 23, sort of 22, 24, that, that's how to be. So that is it. So, is there another question? Can I continue? Huh? I can continue. Okay. But I'm glad for this question because I think it helped to clarify things to us. So, the sense dead and living, the trump of God now sounds so as to gather them, to assemble them so that they can be translated. In Israel, we have some scriptures in Israel, anything, once the dark answer, once that trump is sounded, it's always to gather people to either to worship or to feast or to, so whatever is happening. Someone read it for me. Uh, uh, Psalm 81 verse 3. Another person read for me. Jeremiah 4, 5. And the third, Isaiah 27, 13. I repeat. Psalm 81 verse 3. Jeremiah 4, 5, Isaiah 27, 3. Well, Psalm 81, verse 3. Blow up the two things, and the new two and the time on our solar face day. So you can see the trumpet sounds to gather them onto the feast day. So you can understand what we are saying. Yes? Somebody on the phone? Yes? Declare ye, 
Deus. And public in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And three, blue is found in the land. Pride, gather together and see. Assemble yourselves and let us go into the deepest city. You see again, it's all about gathering together. Yes? Isaiah 27 13. Isaiah 27 13. Yes. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great mountain shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to carry to the land of Assyria, mm. and the outcast in the land of Egypt. And shall worship the Lord in the only one of Again, you see, it's about gathering people and gathering them for some purpose. So that is all that uh, uh, trumpet is all about. But the trump here, however, it is the Lord Himself who is sounding this particular trumpet. He is not going to use any human instruments to accomplish this final stage of his coming for his bride. You know, in the shout, you know there are three stages. Shout, voice of the angel, trump of God. You remember in the shout, God, by his Christ, used and is still using man. Do you understand, church? Because the shout is going on now. The shout is the message of the hour, the message that I'm preaching to you now. So what I'm doing now is part of the first stage of rapture, the shout, what I'm doing now. And everywhere, where this message, final message of God to mankind is being preached, that is the shout still going on. But outside of the shout, in the three stages of the rapture, God does not use any human instrument. It's not involved in the voice of the archangel that is Christ himself. It's not involved in the uh, trump of God that is God himself. I hope you I hope you got this thing clear, right? All right. Was there another question? Huh? Huh? Because I saw something flash here. Last question? Please do a good I I I deliberately want to answer this question because I believe it will clear things up. I don't know what. You have in your mind, but as I said, you can also prepare your own questions. Maybe sometime we are going to have question and answer session, and then all this is come up. Yes, go ahead. So what you are saying is that when completed man, yes. he is the end of the Understand God creating man in his own image has nothing to do with age. That is not what that scripture is about. It's got nothing to do with age at all. It's just so that you understand who man is with regard to creation. And for you to understand that, you still have to go back to what we taught you when we were dealing with creation. That moment that creation started. 
when that light came out, which was the Logos and went into a shape. That is the image of the spirit Elohim. That is the same one we call the son of the spirit Elohim. The same one we call the Logos of the spirit Elohim. Is the same one we call the Christ of the spirit Elohim. Now man therefore was created in the image of that. So it's got nothing to do with age. But when God, remember that from Genesis 1, 27, when God then formed man, which is in Genesis 2, 7, there's a difference between creation and forming or formation. There's a difference. Creation is bringing something up from nothing. That is what creation is, bringing something up from nothing. But forming man, man was formed from something that was already created. What was that thing? Earth. Earth was already created before man was created. So to form man, God merely took from what he had created, which is the head, took the dust of the head, and he used it to form man. Remember, I told you the sun. There were so many, there are 16 elements that make up this flesh of man. So that's exactly what it is. And when that man was now formed, which was given the name Adam, he was in that age of that early 20s. And that's exactly how folks were. Remember when he formed Adam like that, and Eve was to come out. Did Eve come out as a tata? Did she come out as one crony little girl? She came out just exactly as Adam was. And that, and that time God formed her. How did God form Eve? He took her from Within Adam. So all of us are also come like that same way. So as far as God is concerned, this is who man is. That's how we are. But now, because we have to pass through the state of being conceived and then being born, that's why we come out as little this thing. In our spirit, in our spirit, look, I think that, that there's a little child, there's a little child here, Andy, this morning. And I am old, over 80. If God opens your eyes and you see me in my spirit, and opens your eyes and you see that child in her spirit or his spirit, even though he or she is about one or two months old, our uh, two spirits are exactly the same age. Yet I'm over 80, and he or she is just about one month. I hope I'll be able to answer that question. All right. So let's look at uh, on this matter of uh, uh, Trump, of course. Let's look at certain things. I told you before that in this subject, because it's the most important subject in the entire Bible, which is rapture. There's nothing more important. That's why it's mentioned over 300 times in the New Testament. I told you, I'll be using the words of God's prophet messenger to this age a lot so that you will know that it's not, it's not me, it's not I, but we are just learning from what God has given. So I want to read something from, from the Seals book. So I have some understanding. 
I read from the sales book by one five. I'm going to take some things from one of six one seven. And here is a mediator on the altar. Just a little longer until there's no more how to suffer like you, talking about the Jews, man. But now it comes here at this last scene. There are there's a sales book. This sales book contains seven seeds. All right. They say this book that is sealed in Revelation chapter five. Let's go there so that you have an, an, an idea of what I'm trying to see. Please turn to Revelation chapter five. The thing is, churches today, they don't encourage their people to read the book of Revelation. They tell them, no, don't worry about that. You cannot understand, it's not meant for you. They frighten their, their congregants from reading the simple truth that they themselves don't know it. And they want to tell them that uh, uh, it's not for you. It is a lie. Everything in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation is meant for the children of God. But because these people do not want to accept what God has done, and he has a mission on messenger on the earth that he has put all the things that we should know. They don't want to follow his message, and that's why he wrote the book of Revelation to us. In this message is just like reading the book of Corinthians or reading the book of Colossians or whatever. That's what it is to us, and give God glory for that. Okay, let's turn to Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. Is anybody read that from you? Revelation chapter 5, verse 1. Okay, I'll read. And I saw in the right hand of the king and sat on the throne, a book between the king and on the outside, see the tell see. You see, there's a book written within and on the back side. It's sealed with several seeds. Okay, so this is the book we are talking about. This is the seed, the seven seeds book. The seven seeds book. That's why you see it mentioned in the Bible in Genesis chapter chapter five, verse one. In that place we read. This book is sealed with seven seeds. It is sealed. If it is sealed, is it open or closed? Closed. Okay? All right. Now, turn to chapter 10. Chapter 10. Verse 2. What does it say? And, uh, and he had in his hand a little book. Open. Open. And he set his right foot upon the sea uh -huh. and his left foot on the earth. Good. Now, this book which you read in chapter 5, verse 1, that was sealed which is closed, in chapter 10, verse 2, this same book was now open. Do you understand that, church? Yes, sir. So this book we are talking about there is the book of redemption. That's what it is, and that is the seven-sealed book, okay? That is what I wanted to do before today, before I realized I have not talked about the uh, trunk of God. So next Sunday, <coughs> we are going to spend time on it. It will bring us to the very moment of rapture. And there are things we need to see concerning this. So, let me read again. Verse 
the book he said, and now he comes down here and the last seal, the last seal will be the seventh seal because there are seven seals. So last seal will be the seventh seal. And the seventh seal is what you and I have to grapple with now. This is what is the issue today. So ask your friends, ask them who are not in the message, ask them our seventh seal. Do they talk about it in their churches? What do they tell them? That is in the seventh seal. 90% they'll tell you, I don't know what you are talking about. Well, as I want to go to the doctor, say yes. Listen, nobody is going to the doctor who is ignorant. Forget that. You cannot enter rapture with ignorance. It's not going to happen. Am I saying therefore you go to hell? That's what I'm saying. God, in his infinite wisdom, will decide where you go if you miss the rapture. And there are only two ways. If you miss the rapture, you can still be saved. You still pass through tribulation. And then you will stay where that God will allow you to stay, and you finally come up in the second resurrection, would you come well, after 1,000 years that Jesus Christ has come down here, after 1,000 years of the millennial rule of Christ on the earth, then you will come up there. And when you come up there, you are coming straight to face the white throne judgment. White Run Judgment is, is not really a place where it is going to decide whether you are guilty or not. White Run Judgment is actually sentencing. You know, in this our country, we don't know about sentencing in our courts. You go to court and they just say you are guilty, they just say you are guilty and go to prison or you are, you are set free. In most of the lives, the clients, you appear in court, the judge pronounces you guilty. What's today's date? 24th uh, July. And then the judge pronounces you guilty 24th July and says, Come October 10th to receive your sentence. You are guilty. He has to you guilty, so there's nothing that you can escape to be. They say, we come on the October 10th, to tell you how many days you are going to be guilty. So why throw judgment? Basically, when you are carrying there, you are already guilty. So you just sentencing you are coming to. And your sentence simply means go into the lake of fire. A lake of fire. That's why you are punished. But God will save some people. God will save some people. And only, only He knows the grounds on which He goes to save them. Some will be on the grounds of ignorance, genuine ignorance. Some on the grounds of something that He did for His people which means the bride of Christ, or for Israel, those are the only two groups. You are either in the bride or in the group of Israel. But that the rapture, which is the most important thing to God by his Christ, to think that you will enter it in ignorance. I'm telling you, please stop deceiving yourself. If you are not in the message of the hour, it's the message of the hour that contains the truth that you put anybody in the rapture. 
because that is the message that God by his Christ sanctions that he sent his prophet messenger to come and give. And in this our own seventh church age, which is the last church age, he made sure that mankind will know that he has vindicated this message in the so many things he did concerning this message. So that nobody will say, ah, I was not sure whether it's the message or not. He vindicated his prophet messenger to this age. A lot of you have seen, you have known some of it, I've given you an example of some, some of it. And I challenge you, whatever church you belong now, I ask you, who is the person you are following the message? Show me where God vindicated him from this text. Whether you call him Pope, or Admiral of Canterbury, or General Garcia, I'm challenging you. Show me where God vindicated him that he sent him. You will not find only his prophet messenger to this age did he show him, himself to and made him to do things that human beings cannot do so that you will know that this man I sent him and I put all my truth in him. And they said they will not believe. And then they will say they are going in the rapture. What is the message that is leading you to the rapture? From the first church age of which Paul, who wrote the bulk of the New Testament, he was the prophet messenger of God in the first church age. From the first church age to the last, to the sixth church age, all those who were not in the message group of each age of their day, they will not be in rapture. But that does not mean they will be lost. They will not be in the rapture. They will not be in the millennium. But they will come up at the white throne judgment. That is why God is totally against denominationalism. Because denominations are not preaching what he gave to their age. Everybody in the rapture, whoever, everybody who goes to the rapture, will belong to a certain age, a, a church age, either first church age, or second, or third, or fourth, or fifth, or sixth, or this last age, depending on when you were, the period you were born. Those in, for example, those in the Six church age of which John Wesley was the prophet, uh, was the messenger to the age. They don't have the knowledge that we under the seven church age have, and yet they will tell us, right, even though they don't have a kind of message. What message they have is for their day, so God is going to join them based on the message of their day. God is not going to judge the people of uh, six church age with the standard is going to judge of us of the seven church age. No, each church age according to the level of light, the level of light given to it. That's how God will judge them. But unfortunately for this age, as it was for the first church age, God is going to judge first church age and last church age according to the totality of light. So you cannot escape. So you are still there. You are baptizing them of the Father, and the Holy Ghost. And you are saying, I don't, I, I don't steal. I don't lie. I don't fornicate. I don't commit adultery. But you were baptized when you were a child in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Then they put water on your head. Or the man put you in the stream, put you down one time. Father, you get up again. Son, get up again. The Holy Ghost. Then you say you are going to have to be deceiving yourself. You will not go. If you want to get angry, get angry. I'm telling you the simple truth. If you are still on this Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost baptism, please run now. Go and look for somebody to baptize you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. That is the 
full truth of God. And God is judging this by its full truth. Not the half and half of previous ages between second and sixth. The first and last church ages is full, full light. They complete Jezebel in all you are doing. And they come and say, oh, you greet me, say, Daddy, I want to sing for you in tongue. In tongue. You think, say, I have only ghost, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to run to this mountain. Because you speak in tongues, so you understand in tongues. Where did God tell you that? But is that not what they are doing Pentecostal? The entire Pentecostal church today tells them, speak in tongues, and that means you have only got baptism. That's a lie. It has no biblical balance to it. But that's what they believe. I invited the big church that says, come and have confirmation. That is something that's only good baptism. Yeah. And people are telling me, listen, when next Sunday God keeps on, we are going to do a little mathematics on the elect of God. Your eyes will be open, and you will know what you have to do to make sure you don't miss rapture. Because many people think it's a joke, but it's not a joke. But yes, please. If you have Christ God, if yes, will that come from that? So what happens during his death? Is it that the spirit of God left him before he died? Because God will not die. I hope you understood the question, all of you had. Did you hear it? Yes, sir. Okay. Jesus Christ is indisputably God. G O D. When you finally get to heaven in the rapture, you will discover you will be shocked that every time you shout in our father, we are to heaven. And then I say that just the fact that it's the same person. Jesus Christ is not the personality of the Godhead. He is God. The problem is that people don't bother to read correctly their Bible. Angel Gabriel was sent to Mary. Mary was told you are going to become pregnant. But this pregnancy is going to be of the Holy Ghost. Is that what he is that, what, is that what Gabriel said? And he said, so this pregnancy, when you give birth to it, that child, his name will be what? Jesus. Did Gabriel say his name will be Jesus Christ? No. He said his name will be Jesus. That's the name of a man. However, he also, Gabriel, did add, this Jesus, he will be the Christ. Do you see it now? This Jesus will be the Christ. I was, there was a question asked this morning. I know all this may, may have nothing to do with what you are studying, but remember what you are studying is the rapture. So anything that you get onto the rapture is still, in other ways, part of what you are doing. So these questions are relevant as far as I'm concerned. He said, You give back to a child, that child will be of the Holy Ghost. His name will be Jesus. Do you understand? He still will be Jesus. Man. This Jesus 
will be the Christ, God. When I was asking the question earlier, take you back to creation. You know that in creation, there was only one being. He was called what? Elohim. Do you remember, George? Eh? He was all alone. Please, don't ask him, ask me that he was ready. Because I don't know. And nobody knows. And I've listened to some American televangelists say Elohim was living in space. And I asked them, where is your authority for that? Was that space? This Elohim who created space. So why bother yourself about something you don't can never have the answer for? The answer to. So Elohim was all alone. But you know what he taught you before about his great mind. You know it. And therefore his attributes. He wanted to be a creator. He didn't want to be alone again. Elohim simply means the self-existent one, the eternal creator of the spirit. And after he had put together all that would be what you are now called creation, and by creation here, we are not talking about the earth and heaven only. We are talking about the universe. And this earth where you and I are is, a, is so, in terms of the universe, this earth is like a grain of sand. So that gives you an idea about the hugeness of the universe. But somehow, this Elohim, for reasons best known to him, chose to make the earth a replicate kingdom of his own heavenly kingdom. That's what has made the earth to be important. But when he had finished in his mind, great mind, all he wants to be, wants to be a creator, wants to be a redeemer, wants to be a savior, he wants to be healer, he wants to be helper, he wants to be all this, that, that, that. When he had finished all of that, Remember, there was no substance he could use to do them because he was just only no, there was no head. There was no head, there was nothing. Then he spoke. All those things inside of him, he now brought them out. So that shows you that that's what he spoke out where he stops. And that became what? Because what? simply means thought expressed. Anything you say with your mouth is what you have thought in your mind, although you can add lie to that. That is why a lie, as I've understood my own definition of a lie, you know my definition of a lie, I say it's an utterance contrary to the mind of the speaker. That is my definition of a lie, an utterance contrary to the mind of the speaker. But God is not a liar. So everything that inside of him has spoken that. And for that to happen, it was a light. That's what, when he spoke, it was light that you saw. That is why the Bible calls God the light. In some other places, it calls him the father of lights. In some other places, he clothed himself with light, like a garment. You see how that scripture it says, he dwells in the light that no man can approach unto. So however you look at it, God is light. Therefore, when, as Elohim, he now decided to express himself, what you saw was light. That light, Took on the form which you call logos, which simply means 
is Elohim taking on a form. It is that form we call the Christ of the Spirit Elohim. Meaning that it is the same Elohim. Do you understand? Therefore, when Gabriel spoke to Mary and said, The son you are going to give birth to, his name is, his name will be Jesus. But this Jesus, he will be the Christ. So Jesus is a man. The Christ is God. So what in effect happened was that. That is why when Catholic Church said, God is very mother of God, they are wrong. Totally wrong. How can Mary be the mother of God? Does it make sense to you that something that was created will now turn around and become the mother of the creator? Does it make sense to you? I will not believe this thing. I, I believed it for about 40 years of my life. But it is wrong. And people today are praying to them, are praying to Mary. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Mary cannot pray for you. Stop committing heresy. Stop blasphemy. Mary is a fantastic woman of God. But after giving birth to Jesus, she ceased to be a virgin. She had other sons, about five sons and two daughters. One of them, James, who wrote the epistle of James. We the, the Bible describes so when Paul was writing in Galatians to, about his relationship with the apostles before him. So I want God to put to identity. I think so God put all those revelations into Paul. And when God finished with him, he came back. And when he came to James and said, I only met with Peter. I said, also, James, the brother of our Lord. Very clear. It's in the Bible like that. They called him James, the brother of our Lord. Because James was the half brother of Jesus. Just as Jude, the writer of the epistle of Jude, was also a half brother of Jesus. Now, Mary born them with her husband, Joseph. Does that disqualify Mary? No. Mary's in heaven. But well, she's in heaven, like Abraham, like Paul, like Peter, like Abraham, like they in heaven. But she does not see Jesus. She cannot see Jesus. She will see Jesus at the same time as you and I will see Jesus, the day of the rapture. Because Mary is one of those who, when the voice of the archangel goes in the second stage of the rapture, Mary is one of those whose bodies will rise up from the ground and then be changed. She's one of them. So what are you praying to through Mary for? It is wrong. That's why you have to be the message of the hour, to know the correct thing, and stop being deceived, because you have millions in your church. You don't believe that that is where God is. It's a lie. Go back to Matthew 7, 13, and check out what Jesus, that same Jesus said about the, uh, uh, about, um, uh, about the white gate and Broadway. Uh, and, the, and, and, and the straight gate and the narrow way. Go and find out. Many are called, few are chosen. So stop thinking about the size of your church to make you think that that's where God is, is the exact opposite. Everywhere that the truth of God is being spoken, as in this Bible, you cannot find a crowd. Why? Because this truth of the Bible is contrary to this flesh. It's sharing the flesh apart. How many, how many people can stand it? It will control what you eat, how you eat, the company you keep, the type of work you do. This Bible will control it. And many will not want that at all. 
Oh, I have a, I have the, I have a gift of being a dancer. So I, I need to dance in that club. Have you said no? You want to go to heaven? You can't. Oh, I have to be a hairstylist. Uh, so I can go and take a uh, uh, Brazilian, Brazil, what is that name? It's Brazilian, uh, Lush, Lush, that was Lush. Lush, I see that is Lush, Lush. Uh, I'll be putting Lush in their hair. I know that God says you can't. If you do it, you don't belong to me. You belong to the world. I want to run boutique. Uh, let them be. You are selling trousers, selling shorts, Abby, and selling the uh, clever look, how clever look, how you call that one that shows their breast. And uh, cleavage. The Bible says, no, you can't do that. Oh, I want to be an actress. The Bible says, actress to do what? You can't. I want to be a singer in actor. The Bible says, you can't. I want to run blood and say you can't. So many things that God says you can't. You cannot find a crowd where the truth of God is being spoken. So Jesus, Mary carried a human being in her womb. The only difference between a woman today being pregnant and Mary being pregnant is that the woman today, when she's pregnant, she is one feeding the child. The child is doing everything inside the womb through the mother. That's why you have this on the right hand God. Mary contributed absolutely zero to Jesus in her womb. Mary was just an incubator. Leave that, the Bible calls it holy thing. Leave that holy thing in your don't can't do anything. That's why Jesus Christ had no level. The only difference between Jesus Christ and myself and every other being is that Jesus Christ had no level. Otherwise, every other thing that every man has, including private man, Jesus had it. But level he did not have. However, when this son, in when this child in Mary's womb, Remember, Gabriel said, the Christ, this child will be the Christ. As soon as that son was coming out, God took over and went into that child, and that child became Jesus the Christ, which is what we are shouting today and calling Jesus Christ. But what to call Jesus Christ today simply means Jesus, who is the Christ, or Jesus the Christ. But we are showing it to Jesus Christ. And people are now beginning to think that Jesus Christ is the name. It is not. It's Jesus. The Christ is talking about the man, the, the God in him. That is why Jesus Christ, that's why in life, he who you are like God Jesus Christ today, that's why you could be tired. The Christ inside of him does not get tired. Can God be tired? No. So that's the Jesus aspect that's getting tired. That's the Jesus aspect when you will be hungry and you will need food. That's the Jesus side. So when they were now Hitting him, hitting him up. It is the man, the flesh, we are beating, not Jesus. And so when he died, it was Jesus that died. Go and read your Bible. Go and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Go and check the crucifixion of Christ. You will not see any portion there that said Jesus Christ died. None. It is Jesus they all talk about because it's the man that died, not God. Do you not notice that then he gave up his spirit? That, that aspect left him there. So it was 
that body, which is the body of the hundred percent man. So Jesus Christ was hundred percent man and hundred percent God, and that's why we call Jesus, who is the Christ, or Jesus the Christ, or simply Jesus Christ. Hey, I hope that this thing I just spoke now has settled something in the minds of some of you. My dear children of God, the nomination will not put you in heaven. If it is office in the nomination that's your attraction, God is saying to you, say goodbye to these offices and get out of there. That's what the Bible says. And come out of there, my people. That's what the Bible says. But if you are going to be in that place, in those places, and you die, you will not go to rapture. Or if rapture strikes and you are still in those places, you will not be there. If you like, fast. Six days a week. Make you never lie at all. You have never stolen. You have never deceived. You have never fabricated. You have never committed adultery. These are fantastic things. Please keep them up like that. But if you have not got the message of Christ inside of you, you are not going to capture. Those good things you are doing, they may help you to come up with the second resurrection and then you come up at the white room judgment and then God will dash you salvation. And so you will join the bride in eternity. But that you go to rapture, uh, go to rapture, forget it, you will not. Yes, there's a question, yes? She said that she used to be there, just like that, just like that. I'm trying to tell her. It is Jesus that died. Yeah? Uh, the Catholic now was there too. It is Jesus who died, not Jesus Christ. Yeah? Jesus died. Yeah? Yes? Second Kings. Uh, that, that's last week. Yes, yes. You've got the problem. There was a problem there. I was not there with that. No, that is not our way down. You can see that time the service and try that up for you. Okay. So I hope you. Well, I'm glad that these questions came up, even though it's not, they're not the subject of what you are talking about. It is. It is a matter of uh, knowledge so that you know you are sure you are going to heaven. So please drive this on 15 minutes. Let us at least try and finish this uh, uh, trump of God. Okay? Okay, but now he comes. From here at the last sea, the last sea is seven sea. There are seven seals in the seals book, and the last sea is the seventh sea. I will, I will tell you more about this thing on Sunday. God will keep us till then. Now, he comes here at the last sea. He is no more a mediator, he is king now. If you remember, in Revelation chapter 5, where that book of redemption, which is the sealed book, when it came up, he was a lamb. He was a lamb. At that time, the book came up, it was still closed. In Revelation 10, when he came with the loud voice, the voice of the archangel, he roared like a lion. 
So that lambness, baby kissing, was no longer there again. There is now here judgment. I hit you, no longer hit you. So he was no longer a mediator. At least for the Gentiles. And what does he do? He's a king. If he's a king, he has to have subjects. And the subjects are those that he redeemed. Because that book is a book of redemption. It contains the names of everybody who have their names, the Lamb's Book of Life. They are the people who will go in the rapture. So when that angel came down in Revelation chapter 10, and he put one foot on the ground and one foot on the, in the sea, <coughs> that's, yes, he's claiming universal dominion fine, but it's more to show to you those on the land, those are people who are dead and buried, those on the sea, that's talking about the living people, and I took you to last Sunday to uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 15, explain to you that sea simply means nations, people, tongues, and so on. So, uh, then what is Okay, all right. So he has, is again, he has to have subjects. And the subjects are those that he redeemed. And they cannot come before him until he takes the right of redemption. And now he walks forth from being a mediator where death put us in the grave. He comes forth with to claim these people. So that's what we see in Revelation 10. And even those who are alive and remain till his coming shall not hinder those who are asleep. For the trump of God shall sound and shall sound at the last trumpet when the last seal is broken, that is seventh seal. And that's when the seventh angel has given his message. That is message I'm preaching to you. The seventh angel, of course, is the angel to the seventh and last trumpet. We are talking about ground here. Yeah. When the last seal is broken, and when the seventh angel has given his message, the last trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet him in the air. So he's come forth now to claim his possession. That is what we see in Revelation 10. Watch. He broke the seals, he revealed the mysteries, he revealed them where. They reveal them to the last church age, which is this age in which you and I are now. He revealed them to the last church age, and the only one that's living, because that's the church age that's alive. The first to the sixth church age, they're all dead now. It's only this age. The rest of them are sleeping. Okay. Listen again. So you have also the sleeping virgins. The sleeping virgins, meaning the foolish virgins. They're, they are receiving nothing, anyhow. None of them. The foolish virgins are receiving nothing. Remember, while they went to try to buy oil, listen to this. Remember, scripture doesn't say they got it. They went to buy oil. Do you remember? In the case of the 10 virgins, the foolish and the wise, when the shot came, so get ready, the bad boy is coming. Will you keep that boy quiet? When we said 
the bridegroom is coming. The man that was a scam, the wise virgins immediately got their lamps to make sure the light is there. And the foolish virgins were saying, Hey, I don't have the, enough oil, though. please give me some. Sir. I can't share it. Go and get your own. The Bible said that they left to go and buy. Is there any scripture that when they left to go and buy that they bought? Is there any scripture like that? No. They, they come back, the man tells them what they did. Huh? Do you see that anywhere that they came back with something? They came back. They went with them. They went with them something and they came back with something. The scripture doesn't say that they got it. But while they were out trying to buy it, to buy it, there came a sound. What happened? All those veggies that slept arose and trimmed their lamps and went into the supper. And the rest were left for the tribulation period, weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. That is the church. But that is not the bride. Those who were weeping, gnashing their teeth, that is the church. As you see them today, that's not the bride. When the bride is taken away from here, you will still have the church. And the church will still be full. But Christ has left them. They will still be speaking in tongues. They will still be giving prophecies. But Christ has left them already. They are taking this real church. That church of Matthew 16, where he said, Upon this rock I build my church. Christ was talking about the bride church, not just any Babalawo church. Where everyone just stands up and give themselves all manner of titles that you cannot find in the Bible. Where the spirit and the doctrines of Nicolaitans, Balamism, and Jezebelism are all in operation. That is what you find in what they call churches today. They will still be here when the bride church is gone. They will be just a nominal church. They will receive nothing. Just waiting for the time of their damnation. There is a whole difference between the church and the bride. The church is not in the wedding supper. The seals were broken. Why? In the last church age, they were broken to reveal these truths. In the last church age, the seals were broken. So you go and turn to your Bible and read in chapter 6 of Revelation. You will see the seals open. Why were they open? In this last church age, brethren, this Seals were opened during the time of life of 90% of you sitting here. These seals that have been in the, in, the, in, the, in the Bible of God for ages. Remember this same book, church, hear me very well. I know we're about to close, but God does give me a two patients to want to hear. Before you want to scramble off to go and do something else, please just give this some little minutes. This sealed book, this seven sealed book, church, please remember that this seven sealed book came into being from eternity. Do you hear me, church? This seven seal book I'm talking to you about here is not something that anybody said that somewhere has started writing and producing. It was there from eternity. Why? Do you not know about election? When did election come up? Was it after Jesus Christ came to this earth? Was it when Adam was created? 
the elect of God were chosen right from eternity in Elohim. Ever before there was creation. This is what I'm trying to make you to understand. Get this is into you. Forget about that we are a tiny group. Stop looking down on us. Just listen to the truth that you are hearing. The truth that you don't hear in the churches you are attending. Because they don't have the truth. But they will fill you with a lot of music, a lot of uh, uh, speaking in tongues, <coughs> a lot of prophecies. Many of them given by wrong spirits. But because they come true, you think that they're from Christ? This book, the seven seed book, that they don't talk about in churches today, this book existed right with Elohim. And anybody who is going to be saved, who will go in the rapture, your name was in that book from eternity. Do you understand this church? Some of you may be saying, Abba, was I in eternity? How, how would I know that? No, I know that they are not. So it doesn't, it doesn't concern me. So it didn't concern you for a time. Your mom and papa gave birth to you. If that's what you are thinking, you're already lost. Hear the truth of God. This seven seed book was right there from eternity. But it was closed. Sealed with seven seals. And that's why it's called the sealed book. The seven sealed book. Seven seals were there. Now, think from eternity, church. May God help you to know that you are hearing God's truth. Think from eternity to today, 2022. This book remains sealed until 1963. During the ministry of William Marion Graham, God's chosen prophet messenger to this seventh and last church age. And when it was going to happen, this same God by his Christ called his messenger and told him the time was near for it to happen. He told him how it was going to happen and he said to him, now go and tell the church under you. Abraham went and preached that psalm titled, Sars, is this the time? Go get the children of God and read. If you don't have the book, go into, where is, uh, oh, this one is not here again, Play Store. Uh, go to Play Store. Download, go to Play Store, download the table. And then pick out that summer. Sars, is this the time? And read it. Christ came to his messenger and told him what was going to happen when the seals will finally be opened. 1963, a book that had been closed since eternity. So he went and told his church. He said, this is what something I should expect. And because of that, he knew that the Christ telling him these things, he said, I was signed with this. He only spoke much to have witnesses. So he told some brothers in the assembly that they should please come with him. He didn't know the day, but he knew that somehow before whatever it is Christ wants to do will happen, you, you get a tip off. Church, that is not going to take you by surprise. 
Yes, nobody knows the day, nobody knows the time. You and I, if we are going to make rapture, you will see as we continue to teach what we are teaching now, you will know that you are about to live here. You just may not know that moment, day or hour. That is why Christ has never said you will not know the week. He never said you will not know the month. Have you observed that in the Bible? What does he say to you? He says, don't know the day or the hour. Is it that Christ does not know it's called week? Is it that he does not know what it's called month? Why did he try week and month or year? Why did he restrict himself to a day and hour? <coughs> because he knew, he knew, as he still knows, that when the seven thunders will offer their voices, this is what I want to start doing from next Sunday. The Lord will tell you and keep us there. You will know the seven thunders will utter. The whole world will be totally deaf. But the bride that will go in rapture will hear it. Amen. A world of billions of human beings, but a tiny few. They don't will hear this thing. God is not a joker. When he taught people about his church being in seven church ages, and at least last church age will be it. So in 1963, Brown took some through with him. You know, he was a man who loved fishing, who loved uh, hunting, who loved mountaineering. Mountaineering, not be like people today who you see them every time and they say, Oh, uh, I've been on the uh, mountain. I've been on the mountain. That's what they would tell you. Say, oh, well, I call you there and say, Oh, I was on the mountain. When I didn't know they ask him for money, ask him for time, ask him for property, ask him to kill his enemies. Brown was not doing that. And yet he was going to mountains. So he took them. And while they were there, they were trying to, he was trying to remove some uh, cocoa balls on the trousers as well. They were in the bush now. He got the chip. And then he told them, ah, hang on. They knew that thing that his master told him. And after he said, go well, ahead to the church, and I picked that size, is it the time? He knew at that moment is the moment. He stared himself, and this is how was a blast. America is still trying to find out what happened that day. Because rocks started splitting from mountains in, that, in America. When that sound came up, and when that sound came up, what was it that came after the sound? Seven angels. A constellation of seven angels appeared and took him from that place, moving from east to west, and spent the next one week, each one coming to tell him about each scene that was spoken. He who is Elohim came and started opening the seats. And the book that had remained closed from eternity finally was opened in 1963. And the contents revealed. However, the seventh seal, it was opened, but the contents were not revealed. That is why when you read Revelation chapter 8, verse 1, can somebody quickly just read that from me if you can get quickly from me? Revelation chapter 8, verse 1. Who has a, who has a mic, man? Yes. 
And when you have opened the seventh seal, you have a mic pointing to the And when you have opened the seventh seal, there was silence. When they had opened what? No, I want this to from Coconut to Palace. And when he had opened the seventh seal, not the seventh seal, the seventh seal. Yes, when he opened the seventh seal, see, there was a silence in the temple about the space of half an hour. Finish. But when you read chapter six of Revelation. You'll find when the first seal was opened, the second seal was opened, the third seal, the fourth seal, the fifth, the fifth seal, and the sixth seal. You'll find when they were open. Each one was open, and what happened was revealed. Each one was open, what happened was revealed. It was open. But when it came to the seventh and last seal, when it was open, nothing was revealed. Heaven was silent for the space of half an hour. This is what you are now here in this message to understand. Among the seven angels that came, listen to every church. The seventh angel, the seven angels that came, the seventh one in that constellation of the angels was the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. And it was one who picked up Abraham. So that we know what we are talking about. Nobody on this earth can lay that plane. Who says he's a preacher? Let him stand. I start thinking of us as tiny little people. We are only in terms of figures, but not in terms of the knowledge that God has given us concerning his word for this age. And that was why it was that same Jesus Christ in the form, in the angelic form, who sat down with his prophet messenger to the earth to explain the seventh seal to him, which is what I'm discussing with you from next Sunday. So we know what we have. And they don't have it anywhere else except the Hoti William and Brown. Yes. Seven seals. That's all. The same book, the seven seals book, is voluminous about 1280 pages. You know, take some time to read, and if you really truly are there, you say, I want to know, you will see what God is to me. But it's not easy to understand. But the Spirit of God will tell you, show you, once you make up your mind that I must get it. Because God is not an entertainer. You want him, you must work for it. And that's all there is to it. So, 1963, and when those seven angels finished with God's messenger to this age, they went away. And when they were going back to heaven, God left something with this earth, with the world. In space, where no plane can go to. Well, well, well over the clouds, base. God allowed those angels to form a pyramid in space and then allowed the satellite of man which is there in space one of the satellites of america in space god allowed it to pick that cloud that white cloud i think we not here right so otherwise, you would have put that cloud for us on the screen. God allowed it to appear there. The satellite took a photograph of it, sent down to the earth.
And the science people said, no, no cloud can fall at that height. It is impossible. It is contrary to what we know in science. No cloud can ever fall at that height. No way. They started searching for it. They are still searching for it till this very day. They want to prove what was that cloud, 1963, February. February 1963. And the major scientific journals carried that cloud on their cover pages, asking the question, what is this? Science did not know it. That day, when those angels broke the sound barrier and that loud thunder happened, which rock, rock started breaking down, splinters of rocks that broke out were in pyramid shape. People were going around and picking them up that broke out from the, from the mountains. God was leaving a message for people to know that this is not a joke. How is it that a rock, a, a, a rock or a mountain is breaking up, uh, rocks are breaking out of it, and all of them that are breaking up are tiny, tiny, you know, like see these biscuits, we in the chalk, eh? tiny pieces like that, but all of them in pyramid shape. Oh. Church, can that be normal? Absolutely not. So this same area, so they now from this pyramid out there. And when all of these things appeared on these covers of all of these top American uh, science magazines, God told this prophet, messenger, he said, take that one, I think we're going in time, he said, take it to the church and turn it to the right. When he did, unbelievable surprise, the face of Jesus was there. Because it was part of that constellation of the angels. The face of there was looking up down on the earth. So I see that that sounds like it. That photograph is still there. If I think we had that Sunday, he will be able to show it to us. But if he doesn't come and stand by him and run with him, you can see it yourself. I've shown it to you many times before. So we are not talking about fables. This most important sales book, God made sure that the time that he will open it, that you will leave a sign on the earth that you will know that this is the matter. And I'm asking you, do they say this to you, your church? Do they have any idea that such a thing happened in 1963? If they don't know this is how can they interpret Revelation 10, 1 to 6? How can they? This is what this matter is all about. Let me conclude the reading so we can go. Please give me five minutes now. Yeah, the seals were broken. Why? In the last church age, to reveal these truths, why? The Lamb broke the seals and revealed them to his church in order to collect his subjects for his kingdom, his right. He wants to bring his subjects to him now. So that's why Lord Jesus came and then he opened the eyes of the prophet to this last seal, the seventh seal. Because it's time for him to gather his subjects. 
who are his subjects, the bride, with whom he's going to rule the world. Because after the rapture, we go up for several years in there, the wedding, the wedding ceremony. After it, we return to earth with him as his queen. And king and queen will now reign and rule over this whole earth for 1,000 years. Another person is not important. What is it? Out of the dust of the earth, out of the bottom of the sea, out of the pits, out of everywhere and every place, out of the regions of the dark, wherever they may be, these subjects of Christ, the bride, he will call and they will answer. Amen and amen. He will call and they will answer. Remember that song we sing that hymn? When well, there's something, who can remind me? Well, if, well, if you mind the roll call, it's called. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. When you be there, when the road is called up yonder, 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 and be there. That is what is happening when Christ is coming down with that book open, the book of redemption contain the names of those who were already the elect of God from eternity. One foot on the sea, one foot on the, on the air. Every human thing is there and is calling the road. He calls your name. That he says, will you be there? Will you answer? This is the question, you see? So, Christ comes to his subjects, he revealed his secrets, they saw it, and time therefore is no more at that time. At that time when this happens, one foot in the sea, one foot, one foot on the land, with that book in the sand, time has run out. Time is no more. So he who is holy, let him remain holy. <coughs> Who is a sinner? Let him remain a sinner. We shall come to that when we begin to expand this. He leaves the throne. He leaves the throne to be an intercessor as a slain lamb. He leaves the throne where he was intercessor as a slain lamb to be a lion, a lion king, to bring the world to judgment. Who has rejected his message? That's what he's coming to do. He has left the throne, the throne of mercy. That same throne is become the judgment seat. Now, those who rejected his message, but they are, you now have to answer him. Remember the Old Testament teaching. When the blood went up the mercy seat, what was it? Judgment seat. And when the lamb slain, the lamb slain, walked forward from eternity out of the Father's throne and took his right, it was judgment seat. Then he become not a lamb anymore, but a lion king. And he calls for his queen to come stand by his side, that's the bride. Know ye not? that the saints shall judge the earth. Daniel said, 
the judgment, judgment seat was set and the books were open and 10,000 and 10,000 of thousands, billions, ministered to the king and queen. And then another book was written, which was the book of life. That's for the church, not the bride church, but the church. The queen and the king stood there judging them. May we be among those who stand with Christ to judge this earth. The white room judgment in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Now, Father, we just thank you for this thing. We thank you for what you have done today, sharing your word with us. We thank you for teaching us. That which your spirit has given to us today, Father, grant that your children will remember it. And Father, may you enable them to have full understanding of it and redirect their steps in the matter of salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Do not allow that your children will ever be deceived by all of these things going on in churches today, making them believe that they have your truth, whereas in fact they do not have it. Do not allow any of them to fall under the beguiling messages of churches today. But may they all come to embrace your truth, even by the message of the hour, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you, God, because we know you have answered our prayers today by blessing us with this word. Take all the glory, Lord. Take all the honor. Take all adoration and thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, it's a new day, it's a new week, and we thank you, Lord, for being in charge, bringing us to see it. In accordance with your purpose for each and every one of us, we see us through this day and through this week in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Every move of the enemy against us in whatever shape or form, whether we remember them or not, whether we are even aware of them or not, Father, find the battle of life for us. Do not allow Satan and his forces to triumph over us in any shape or form in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father God, Lord Jehovah Sano, the Lord God of us, Fight all our battles for us. We don't have to raise a finger. You have never held the ball. The mighty God, a great deliverer, continue to destroy all the altars and tabernacles and temples and shrines and covens and strongholds of the enemies. All these places where they gather to plot and execute evil against us. You know them where they are. You see the people are gathering there. You know how they are behaving there. You are the omniscient God. You are the omnipresent God. You are also the only them, God. Descend upon them with thy great power, O God, and thy wrath in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Use the same power to save this country, Nigeria, from the hands of all of these kidnappers, abductors, rapists, all of this who killing and maiming, destroying large names and properties everywhere. Father, you know who they are. You know where they are preaching from. You know where they are hiding. Father, descend upon them with thy great wrath. Let the fire of your spirit hit all of them. Destroy the operations out of this country and send this country back on the name of security and prosperity, even for our sake, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God Almighty, we pray for the world and all these places where evil is triumphing and Russia attacking uh, Ukraine. And in America, where people are quarreling over whether life should be prepared to be uh, preserved or not, they want to be going into abortion and they are crying because they say there should be no more abortion. Father, let your spirit direct in the mighty name of Jesus. You own the universe and all that there is in it. While we are here, Father, we have to walk. He who does not want to say you should not eat. Father, bless the work of our hands in accordance with your promise. For your name is Jehovah El Shaddai, the Almighty, all sufficient God, and great bestower, and nourish and succor. You are Jehovah Jireh, the great provider. You are Jehovah El Yon, the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth, the great dispenser of the great benefits in the earth, come to us, your children. Hear our cry, Lord, in all we have committed to your hand, in the matter of our endeavors, undertakings, our enterprises, our strivings, our business, our finances. Father, hear our cry. Prosper them. Do not allow that we shall suffer retardation in them, we shall suffer stagnation. 
not allow failures or disappointment or near misses be a portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Back all our efforts up with thy great success, thy miraculous breakthroughs. Bless your children with them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Our health goes with words. And you are Jehovah's Rafa. 2,000 years ago, we were healed by the stripes of our Savior Jesus Christ. We claim this healing. Therefore, in any way your children are suffering aches and pains, ailment, illness, sickness, disease, infirmities of all sorts, afflictions, in any shape or form, Father God, we cry to you. Fight back for your children, and you who are the healer, Jehovah Rafa, bless us with great healing. Let no power of hell triumph over us by trying to afflict us because we form the organs of our bodies correctly, from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet, the internal and external. Our blood flows, all the fluid, everything we put right. And Satan came with his wicked implantations. And this has brought us all manner of aches and pains, infirmities, and non diseases. Take them all away from us, O God, we beseech you in Jesus' name. Above all, O God. Do not allow us to be deceived. Bless us with thy truth. That when it is time for the trumpet to sound for the translation of your sins, we will be combat among them. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray. Amen. Arise, O Lord God, come down and show us thy mercy. For the time to favor Zion. I will plead my Father and my God, the one of committed to your hand. Now this be the time to favor us in all of them, spiritual and temporal. For ye the set time is come. You set it so much. Let it be our portion in this time, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. Amen. Let his face shine upon you and be precious unto you. Amen. It is countenance upon you. Lord bless you, his children, his blood and peace. The grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the mighty living Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Amen. We thank God. And I want to thank you, our brethren, who joined us in the Zoom platform. Our brother and Zoom, our sister Getty, our sister Oribo, our sister Patricia, our sister Maker, our brother. Obi, and so many others who were there and have put them down. I thank all of you. The sacrifice you have made to join us today. The Lord God reward you for it. For all in the mighty name of Jesus. And our brethren here too, who just